Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another Indigenous Wisdom for the Earth series conversation. I have a very special guest today. Her name is Sister Zeph. And some of you may remember her from our 2017 Wild Hope for Humanity interview series. Uh, hers was called The Lioness Rises with Love. And if you haven't read it yet, or you haven't heard it, please go to our website. It's an amazing discussion that you don't want to miss. Um, now, for a little bit of an introduction, let me make some of you aware who haven't you know, met her before, that uh, after she faced educational abuse and discrimination at a young age, Sister Zeph set out to start her own school for girls so they can get an education and be treated with kindness. Her one-room school is now Zephaniah Free Education and Women's Empowerment Foundation, where they provide 12 years of free schooling to the most disadvantaged in rural Pakistan and skills training to hundreds of women free of charge. Sister Zeph's work also helps keep children out of child labor and child marriage. She has met so many challenges in doing this work, which continues to this day. But I just realized she would be perfect to con continue our theme of resilience for the month of March. Greetings, Sister Zeph. Please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, and a bit of history about what you do. Um. First of all, thanks to the Tree Sisters. They always give me the opportunity to share my story with their um, huge number of uh, sisters and their fans all over the world. And um, I would say good morning and good evening, everybody, wherever in the world you are. Well, um, as Sister Tara told you, my name is Sister Zaf. And, um, um, I was 13 years old when I had to face discrimination in my school and um, uh, at that time it was so hurting because I have always been a very sensitive person and um, uh, my self-respect has always been very um, uh, important and valuable for me. And um, so I decided to leave my school and I decided that I will never go back to a school in Pakistan. So I uh, made this uh, on school in the courtyard of my home and um, uh, my first uh, student uh, was my younger sister. So this is uh, where I started uh, my journey and along with that I kept teaching myself as a private student because in Pakistan uh, you just prepare for the exams uh, if you want and uh, uh, then you can take private exams. So this is how I did. And uh, I did my master's in political science like this and master's in history. And now I'm doing my master's in education. And um, I never stopped getting education and I never stopped teaching uh, the girls and uh, boys in my community. And now we have a school where we are giving uh, 12 years free education to 200 uh, uh, underprivileged students and 300 young women are getting uh, um, vocational training uh, free of charge uh, from 20 villages and uh, uh, this is uh, this free school is uh, uh, the only school in around uh, 200 uh, villages in this uh, whole um, uh, what is that uh, uh, Gujranwala region so, and uh, uh, only school, a free school being run by a Christian and a woman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's certainly a lot of challenges there. I'm curious because it, maybe if you could tell a little bit about the culture of what it's like there, because I'm not sure everyone has the understanding of how difficult it is for women. And then speak to the fact that how you as a woman actually started this and some of the resistance you met and how you overcame that? Pakistan, uh, unfortunately, Pakistan is the sixth most dangerous country in the world. 32% um, children in Pakistan never get an opportunity to go to school. And uh, those who get education, do, uh, get this opportunity to go to school, 87% girls out of them have to drop off of school uh, before ninth grade. Our government spend 2.3% of uh, GDP on education. And uh, our population is more than um, 200 million. 
So uh, it's a huge population and uh, um, uh, empowerment and uh, uh, gender discrimination is um, on top of the list uh, and children are not safe here, especially. I mean, uh, I would like to give an example. Uh, 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 a few weeks before a lady, uh, she was traveling on the motorway with her three children and two men kidnapped them. They brought them down the road and uh, on the gunpoint, they raped that lady, those men uh, in front of her children. And uh, this was a very famous case, but actually every day in Pakistan, uh, children are being uh, abused sexually. They are uh, being burned alive. I'm sorry to uh, say that. And they are being killed. And unfortunately, our society, uh, they are not taking a strong stand on this. They are not uh, 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 standing up against this brutality. So women and children are not safe in my culture, unfortunately. And uh, um, uh, here I want to mention um, uh, an incident that has happened to us recently that uh, there is a religious cleric uh, in my village who has made this uh, his own school, an Islamic school. And he made this announcement in the mosque during the Friday prayers that this woman is a Christian, so the Muslim children should not go to her school. Well, he is making this school, and he wants all the children to go to his school. So uh, uh, he didn't say anything uh, about the vocational uh, training institute because he doesn't have his own vocational training institute. So this is how people are creating problems for us. And then um, uh, I don't know if you have seen that video. I think you have seen that video where uh, our van is stuck inside that, uh, what is that, sewage water, it's so dirty, and people are throwing a lot of garbage in front of our school, why? And th then they block our uh, sewage with the bricks because they, they, they are forcing us to stop teaching the children uh, because when it is free, then people uh, are convinced to uh, educate their girls as well. And in my culture, unfortunately, um, uh, especially in rural areas where I belong to, people think that education is not important for women, learning skills and being empowered is not important for them. Otherwise, they will uh, um, use their decision making power and men don't want them to uh, take their own decisions. Even when men, women uh, cannot decide that uh, what kind of uh, uh, clothes they can wear and uh, what, um, uh, uh, what food they can eat and when they can sleep and when they have to wake up. It is decided uh, by the men of the family. So this is how it is. I, uh, I want to give you another example. Recently, a local assembly, uh, they have decided in uh, um, Char Sada uh, area of Pakistan that um, the women uh, in that area, they cannot go out of their home. Even a man cannot uh, enter in the, city, in the, in the streets uh, to sell anything to the woman. So this is how it is. And if those women will go out of home to the market, uh, their families will have to pay the fine. Yeah, I think that's so hard for so much of like people in America or in Europe to like realize. I mean, we take these things for granted. We can walk out and wear whatever we want. We can pretty much do whatever we want. And to hear that there's still this uh, very entrenched culture of women aren't recognized as equals or that they have rights. Yes. It's difficult to, to kind of wrap our, our minds around. And I think I remember the first time you are and you were saying something like uh, women can't even go for a walk by themselves or they can't speak to a, another man without being accused of, of some sort of negative thing. Um, is that? Yes. Yes, just last week, a man has uh, uh, killed his uh, sister and brother-in-law because uh, they married without his permission. So this is a common practice. We call it uh, honor killing. A woman this is legal? I mean, they allow this sort of thing to go without being punished? Uh, no, it is not. 
uh, allowed after 2018, I guess, when this uh, famous lady was killed by her brother because uh, uh, she was uh, into media and she was a model. So her brother killed her. And then there was a huge debate in the country about, uh, against honor killing. So now it is against law, but uh, there are many laws. When we talk to the government people, they, uh, they will give us a shut up call by saying that we have made this law and this law and th that law. But uh, making laws is not enough. Creating such culture that can stop such things is important. Implementation of laws is more important. But this is not happening in our country. That's why um, uh, on the media, I'm, uh, I'm saying this for the first time. And uh, um, I want to say this, that our country is becoming very extremist. And our people will have to face the consequences very soon. Just uh, because I am teaching girls and I'm giving them free education, some boys made this plan uh, that they will kill me they will kidnap me and they will kill me. And it happened just a few weeks before. So now I cannot, because I'm an educationist, because I'm, an, uh, I'm a humanitarian, that's why I cannot move uh, freely. I have to, uh, 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 my family, they are, they are scared, but I am so lucky that my, my parents, uh, they are standing with me by any cost. And now we have, we have these clear threats, but still they are not, uh, asking me to stop my work because they know I'm I'm not going to give up. Yes. It's better for it's it's easy for me uh, to be killed, but it is not easy for me to accept that if I will give up, there are many children whose future will be ruined. Right. That's why I was wondering about how do you face so many challenges, so much negativity against what you're trying to do. Is it just you know in your heart this is what needs to be done and you must follow through and it's that outweighs the the fear and the all the negativity because so many people would just give up and they just like this is too much i'm out but you've continued on through so many challenges i'm just i'm just so it's such an honor to speak to you and to just know that there's so many people's lives that so many young women who can realize that they can be more because of you and what you're doing with your work. And I think that's priceless. And I just love that we're being able to speak to you about that because you know, I think we've rallied around you before and we can rally around you again and do what we can to help you continue your mission. Um, I, you know, I'd actually love to hear a little bit about some of the things that, I know you also do women's empowerment and I've seen, the thing I, well, I loved, I wanted to talk to you about was that they make these reusable bags out of scrap material. And that's yes. just so wonderful. If I could just hear about some of the training that you offer to the women and oh my gosh, the dresses and the designs I've seen you post, they're just amazing. Can you speak a little about that, please? Yes, um, uh, we are uh, teaching them uh, dress designing with our very limited sources because our sources are so limited. And, um, uh, but uh, I'm glad that they are making so nice frocks and, uh, uh, they are making these handbags. And we decided to uh, uh, make these handbags uh, uh, with, re, uh, with usable clothes because uh, in Pakistan, still people are using uh, plastic bags on a vast level. And uh, we wanted to do something to uh, protect the environment. Actually, uh, it is a two hours drive from here, the metropolitan city uh, Lahore, it is the most polluted city in the world. Yes, last mm -hmm. week uh, uh, um, uh, I, I heard this uh, on the media that it is the most polluted city in the world. So uh, every individual in the Pakistan has to take some step. So what we are doing, uh, we have, um, because I love Cree sisters, what you are doing, it's, it's one of the most important things because if our world will be there, then we can do other things. So what Three Sisters are doing, you are uh, protecting the world. So uh, um, um, when I uh, met online Sister Claire and I started following 
then we decided to do some things. So what we are doing now, uh, we are uh, giving these bags to people so they can use these bags instead of plastic bags. The second thing we are doing is that uh, we give one plant as a, as a per, per, um, birthday gift to our students. So what they have to do, they look after the tree, uh, this plant throughout the year. And then on the next birthday, they show it to everybody that what they have done. So uh, why are we doing this? We are trying to teach them uh, the plants are so important for our environment. They can do it. And uh, they also have a very healthy activity and they learn how to look after the plants and how, why uh, we should plant the plants. Because uh, population in Pakistan is increasing so much. People are cutting trees, uh, every, even the agriculture uh, uh, area are becoming towns. So um, uh, this mm -hmm. thing in uh, protecting the environment and educating our students about this, it is very important. Yeah. I, I love that you bring that element in, that you're teaching them about the importance of the earth and why we need to take care of it. Because you're right, if we continue to use up everything as a commodity or a resource, then there's nothing left. And then what? You know, it's We've already seen, I think, from this past year, 2020, that just some of the changes that have come from, you know, just using our planet as a commodity when it's not. It, it's our home. It's our life. It's our breath. The trees are our breath. The trees are what actually give us oxygen, and a lot of people don't realize that. And I also understand there's that place where people, in some areas, they rely on cutting the trees just to have fuel or to make some money to pay for food. So I understand it's a cycle that that's unfortunate, but it also needs to have awareness to change it and bring about a difference. And I love that you're actually instilling this in the youth. So they're learning a new value and it's something that they can continue to grow with and, and carry on for the next generation and beyond. And um, just so much that you do in I think I also saw you do self-defense. You're teaching women self-defense, which I thought is amazing. Is that yes, right? Because, uh, yes. Uh, in our culture, uh, street harassment is very common uh, because uh, uh, we have uh, uh, most uh, uh, young people in the world in Pakistan. And... Uh, they are. Uh, they do not have access to education. They do not have jobs. They do not uh, have skills. What they do, they keep their mobile in their hands and they keep sitting in front of their doors or in the streets or in the markets. And when women pass by, they uh, harass them. So uh, that's why people do not like to say and their daughters, the women of their family outside of the home and they feel it is against their honor to send the woman outside to get education or to do the job. That's why it is very important for women to have self-defense techniques. And this is what we are doing thanks to our friend, uh, uh, Rachel from, uh, uh, Michelle from America. She has taught self-defense techniques to Skype to our students and that she's so amazing. Yes, uh, there are many friends who uh, give different kinds of trainings to our students online. Oh, that's wonderful. I didn't know that part. Oh my goodness, that's, that's it. Yes. And I love that because they're, they're learning skills, you know, they can become seamstressed or they can, you know, I think that's why teaching like was it makeup and bridal, you know, for people getting ready for weddings, just all these skills that they can take and they can become employed. And I really think that's an, an important step to empower the women to know that she has abilities and skills and gifts to offer. And she doesn't have to necessarily rely on a man to provide for her because, you know, as you said, they get in this trap in this cultural where they feel like they must be less than. And it just, yeah, the fact that you're taking on so many challenges and changing, creating that change to even have a place to grow. I hope you understand how, how, how much that is valued by everyone who's probably going to be watching this. And, and it's so important in this world and it's so beautiful that you do that. What, what can Tree Sisters do to help support what you're doing? What, if anyone's watching this, what would you like them to know that you 
that they could help with? Um, this time we are going through a very big challenge. That is that uh, we have to relocate our school from here because as I told you before, we have security threats. And uh, uh, what we have decided, uh, we have decided to donate our own home to the school and uh, uh, we want to convert our home into school and then we will shift into a rented house in a safe area because uh, majority of my students are Muslims. So it is confirmed that uh, um, uh, nobody will um, treat them bad. They, they will be safe here in the village. But if we move the school from here, uh, we cannot afford to give pick and drop to the students. And many students will drop off the school. The teachers will leave their jobs. They will lose their salaries and they will not be empowered financially anymore. So we have to keep the school here. That's why we want to convert the school in, the, uh, um, in my home. Uh, but uh, this is a simple home. My parents built it 30 years before. And even in the room where I'm, where I'm sitting right now, it's, uh, its walls have uh, cracks. So the whole home after the 2008 earthquake, that was a huge earthquake in the Pakistan, uh, our house, mm -hmm. it has cracks. And we need to build some room upstairs uh, to make separate classrooms. Uh, before that, we have to fix these walls. That's why uh, we need financial support. And uh, uh, if we have it, then we can continue educating. I mean, we have a building, we have a land, uh, but we need to build some more rooms. And I need financial support for this. Yeah. And is that on your website? You have a website, Zephaniah, for your yes. education? No, you this is, to know the... it is uh, www.zephaniaeducation.org. This is our website. And okay. uh, uh, the donation go to uh, support education worldwide. It is. Uh, it has five one O C status, so it is very easy for the donors to donate there, and then the donations will come to me directly okay. from the support education worldwide. Yes. Great. I'll make sure we share that um, on our website and our email when we share this call as well. Yeah. No, that's that's so important. And you know, your parents are so generous of them to share a home that they built to support this project yes. and. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that you're getting away from the situation you were in because I've seen some of the pictures you've shared of those sewage backing up and you know that's that's just they need to get away from that and I hope it's a safe location and you can continue to grow and, and thrive in that area. Yes, um, our children are getting sick. Uh, they are mm -hmm. getting diarrhea and skin diseases and teachers are also so much worried. So uh, my parents, they are uh, they are a gift for the world because uh, uh, they are not rich. They are laborers and this home, they made, this is the thing, this was their dreams, dream to have a, their own home. And now they have decided to donate this home to the school because otherwise many children, they will lose hope in their life and we cannot afford it to, uh, for these children to lose their hope. They, yeah. they have to be optimistic for the future. Yeah, no, oh, that's beautiful. I, I've also, I, I just remembered, I've also seen pictures of you gathering food and giving it away to like widows. Yes. Am I remembering correctly? There's, there, you have some sort of a program to help support. Uh, um, yes, uh, we ha because you know, uh, in Pakistan, girls get married uh, at the age of uh, 13, 15 or 16 years old. And uh, when, uh, unfortunately, some of them get widows, and when they are widows, they have children, they do not have any education or skills, they have to depend on others. And when they have to depend on others, many sad things happen to their children or to themselves. That's why we have to help them, we give them groceries, we get, uh, give them uh, winter and summer clothes, we uh, bring uh, fabric in, uh, in bulks, and then we stitch them in our skill center, in our uh, stitching center, and then we give it to them. Also in the, uh, um, what is that? Um, during uh, the pandemic and lockdown, we have been um, giving uh, groceries to so many people. We, we spread uh, 
uh, grows among 2,000 families. Wow, that's amazing. I hope, I, I don't know, I guess I'm kind of curious, does the community see that what you're doing and how it's helping people? I mean, I'm wondering if any support comes from the fact that you are doing those kind of things. Uh, these are uh, my friends um, mm -hmm. who are donating us from America and from New Zealand. Uh, th these are the two places from where our donation come mainly. Unfortunately, because of terrorism in the country, I do not have still bank account for my NGO, which means I cannot uh, apply for the grants. So mm -hmm. you can see that I, I can have uh, only uh, a very limited amount of money, like $3,000 or $4,000. And this is the amount in mm -hmm. which uh, uh, that we have to use to do all these things. We also give midday meal uh, to our students. So there are so many things that are happening. That's why I, I always have to be in stress uh because every month i have to beg for money and some people think that she sisters have keeps asking for the donations because they do not know that i i cannot apply for the grant so we do not have big amount of money in the account we have to ask every month or or like this relocation right now we have to relocate so uh, we need some extra money this is an emergency that's why i have to ask yeah. otherwise yes. there is no hope Yes. No. We are, applying, we are applying for the bank account. I hopefully we will get it in um, in few months. But until then, I need the support of the generous people. Like many people are, you have also been donating many times. So uh, yeah, this is how we are doing this. That's, yeah. No, it's definitely worth supporting. I don't. I've not heard of anyone else who's taken on the challenges you have and is making such a, a difference to the lives of those the women and the children in that area. And that's so important. The women's empowerment is very important. And we're just so grateful that you're doing that. Well, I guess one more question I'm thinking is, how did COVID impact your school? Because I know you it's a school. Did you have to close down the school for a while? Or do you just have the children coming with masks and, and sitting six feet apart? Or how did the pandemic no, this, uh, the schools were closed for uh, uh, straight for six months and uh, then another one and a half month. So basically schools have uh, uh, reopened in uh, January again. Okay. Yeah. After okay. 15th January, yes. So it's it's not been a long, that's why uh, uh, we, are, we were paying salaries to our teachers, but the other, uh, the money we were uh, saving from the other expenses from the school, uh, from the bills or other stuff, uh, we used that money to uh, feed hungry during the lockdown. I see. Okay. Yeah. And have, I'm curious, how long had, I'm wondering if any of the children that you started with a few years ago, if they've gotten to the point where they're now becoming some of your teachers or some of your guys or mentors, have you seen like, some of the effects of giving them that education and, and what they've done with it since then? Um, 10, more than 10 girls actually, they have been teaching in our school and some are teaching. Uh, some have their own beauty salons, others have gone to police, some have become nurses, some are educated mothers and um, uh, they have reached on some point. None of them uh, uh, has been failed. But uh, I, in my last interview, I told about a girl in February 2017. She was in ninth grade and she was killed by her brother. I can never forget her because he had a doubt that she was talking to a man. So he killed her. That's unfair. Yeah, it's very difficult to really grab. And there is another young lady who got married uh, two years before, and then she was having some dispute with her husband, and she has been living at her parents' home, and then her parents said, no, we cannot take the responsibility. You have to go, or uh, we will commit suicide because it is against our law, so, uh, against our honor. So she had to go back uh, to her husband, and. Uh, when she went there, she got pregnant immediately. She gave birth 
to her son in August and her husband did not let her take a bath for two months, straight for two months, yes. I don't, I don't know how you cope with those kind of things happening on a regular basis and then hearing them. I, that I tried. Was, before, yeah. before, I was, before I was talking to you, I started talking to you today, I cried because this is how I had to uh, bring out or uh, what is that, make myself empty. Otherwise, um, I would have become uh, mentally abnormal. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I. Yeah. No. I really feel for you, and I feel for the situation. And you know, that's that's kind. Of, and that's why it's so important to get out to the world on a wider scale. What you are doing, what the conditions are, what you have to face. It's yeah. There's just so much gratitude for the work that you do. Um, yeah. Sorry. I'm. I'm just. Uh, yeah. I'm. I'm starting to get to that place where I'm becoming emotional about it. So um, I'll just look at my notes and ask you. What do you have any wisdom or anything that you just want to share with our network? That, like this is an open platform for you. Is there any anything that you've learned or anything that you want people to know that you've learned in your time and experience with this? I want to tell, or uh, I would like to share that uh, uh, challenges are so beautiful. Challenges are gift because every challenge has a new success story for you on the other side. Every ch challenge has a new opportunity for you. So take the challenges as blessings because this is how I deal with them. That's why I love them. And uh, uh, when we are looking at our uh, um, goal, our focus is on our goal, then we always win. So uh, take the challenges as blessings. Oh, that is such a absolutely beautiful mindset and so important for all of us. Wow, thank you so, so, so very much. I, I really appreciate you spending time with us today and look forward to sharing your work with everyone. And, yeah, is there any last thing you'd like to share before we close up or? Um, I want to say that uh, these women and these children, they depend on every person who has uh, this wisdom and who has, uh, uh, who can feel their pain and who believes in equality we all have to rise up for them, not in Pakistan, everywhere in the world. We have to save, if we want to save the future of the world, we have to plant trees and we have to educate the mm -hmm. children. We have to empower the women. These are the ways to save the future of our world. So join me, join Tree Sisters, and let's stand up together. That's beautiful, thank you. I wanna also invite all of our viewers if you haven't, go on Facebook and look up Sisters F and just watch some of the videos and just see how much those children love having the education, spending time with these sisters and learning. It will touch your heart and it will move you and it will give you a greater understanding of what we've been discussing today. So thank, thank you and thank you so very much, Sisters F, for being with us. And thank you and everyone thank for you. joining us. <laughs>